Well, solving a system of linear equations can be done by considering the augmented matrix. The reduced row echelon form for the augmented matrix AB. And there are three possible scenarios. Well, the first case is that there are no solutions. Yeah, recall the example where we had this parameter k, where depending on the value of k we had a solution or not. Well, there are actually no solutions if we look at the reduced row echelon form of AB and we get an inconsistent system. So what is an inconsistent system? Well, if we get on the A part of the reduced row echelon form, some row of only zeros, whereas on the right hand side, we get a one. So we get a pivot in the B column. Yeah, why is this? Well, on the left-hand side we, we get 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2, etc. plus 0 times xm equals some constant 1. So this cannot hold for, for no uh, uh, vector x. So we get an inconsistent system. Well, this is just the same as stating that the rank of the augmented matrix is not equal, is unequal to the rank of A. Why is that? Well, we get now get one pivot more in the augmented matrix to define the reduced row echelon form of AB are the same steps to calculate the reduced row echelon form of the matrix A which can be found on the left hand side. So in particular we get that the rank of A is smaller than the number of equations. Now we need one line or one equations to have an additional pivot in the column attached to B. So now we can characterize the situation where we actually have one solution, a unique solution. Well, there is exactly one solution if the reduced row echelon form of AB is of the following type. There is exactly one solution if only each variable gets a pivot. Yeah, we may have a lot of zero rows in case a number of equations is larger than the number of variables. But each variable in each column and each row, when we have a one, then we can read a solution immediately from the reduced row echelon form, since it says here x1 should be equal to the element that we find here in the reduced row echelon form, etc., until the nth variable. So actually the rank of the augmented matrix AB equals the rank of A because here we get the number of pivots equals the number of pivots from the larger matrix. 
So this is no more than saying that uh, the rank of A, A has full rank. This means that each of the columns of A gets a pivot. Well, there's just one other case. And this is the case where we have infinitely many solutions. Now, when do we have infinitely many solutions? Well, we have infinitely many solutions at least when we should have that we should have a consistent system so it cannot hold that we are in case one so if we have a zero row on the location of A then the latter part should be a zero as well so actually the, the type of matrices we get is we have uh, rows filled with zeros on the bottom part of the matrix And we have some elements on the right hand side. Regardless what these elements are, we get pivots along the way, but we also should have some degree of freedom to choose elements. So we have a free variable, for instance, here. In this case, we have the third variable can be freely chosen, just as the fourth, or one, two, three, four, fifth element can be freely chosen. So we have a number of pivots and the other ones are the free variables. So in this case we have that the rank of A of the augmented matrix equals the rank of A yeah, since the, the latter column does not get a pivot and also we should have that the rank is smaller than M not every column gets a pivot. Yeah, so here we have some columns which have no pivot. So the number of free variables equals the number of columns we have in A. In A. So these are M columns for an N times M matrix minus the rank, minus the number of leading elements in A, or the number of pivots 